Ah, we work for more than 35 years in the department on herpes viruses. And especially for feline herpes virus, we are much concerned by the fact that this is a, a widespread virus, a very easy respiratory transmission between animals, and the fact that uh, it remains latent in animals, so you have lifelong infection in a lot of animals. Yes, there are, I think, two main challenges. The fact that, okay, it remains latent, so if you have a multi cat household or a cattery, you, you can be sure that herpes virus should be somewhere in a hidden state because you cannot see it. It is hidden, infected uh, at a latent state, some of the cats, maybe almost all cats. And then uh, sometimes uh, you have reactivation and reexcretion, so it can be transmitted. And so sometimes it, it can produce disease. And so you can see these uh, upper respiratory tract disease, a kind of flu syndrome in cats. And what is very important also is the eye diseases and particular conjunctivitis and uh, these herpes keratitis. Oh, there are many aspects that are covered by the guidelines. So you can find, let's say, the general information dealing with pathogenesis and clinical signs. I would say that uh, what is especially important is the guidelines related to the vaccination schedule. Uh, that's important because you know that uh, two vaccinations are uh, mandatory in order to provide enough immunity to the, to the kittens. Uh, also, we have a good chapter on treatment <clears throat> and especially the antiviral treatments that could uh, try to cure herpes virus keratitis, for example, that is very important. And okay, we can give uh, a lot of uh, valuable information to the practitioner.